Hello everybody, welcome back to Phil's Advanced Cat Musician. Still using the, well, I suppose I'm gonna call them the Lanius Bomber set. Still being joined by Federation Scum. Moving on to the next ship, the Asphyxia. First of all, hello. Hello, I am Federation Scum. <laughs> Alright, so the Asphyxia. The Asphyxia. Basically, the first thing that came to mind when I was trying to come up with like a different concept for Lania Sporting, uh, I remember a time with Rock B and I basically, you know how rocks are immune to fire, so mm -hmm. I would usually just keep them in a place if I needed them to stay there for a bit. But, uh, one, a funny occurrence, they, uh, one of them had a little bit of health and the fire eventually sucked all the oxygen out and my poor Rock Sporting crew died in that room. Oh well, but well, basically that is the basis. Fire can suck oxygen out of rooms over time after they've destroyed systems during, you know, in the meantime. And thus, the asphyxia was born. It's all about mass chaos, distraction, and eventually cleaning up the, you know, cleaning up after all that with the lineus. Well, I just started a run and we'll see how it goes. First things first, I do like the fact that you recolored shields. Looks great. Yeah, I, I thought it would be a nice touch to, you know, I, I, you know, just to give it more of an identity of its own. Hmm. The cloak image also is red if, if you ever get a hold of hacking, you know, early in the run, but, you know, we never know. Yeah, um, the, the oh, it's called floor image is different as well. Usually just gray, and this one's red. Nice touch. Alright, so the first encounter is already going to take half an hour because it's an auto ship. Oh, well, it's, it won't be that bad so long as he didn't... Well, at least you have a guy on the ship, so if the clone bay does get shot, he can just go repair it. Um, I've got two Lannis in the... I think I'm just going to put a Lannis in every room. It's probably going to be the quickest way of doing things. Yeah, but make sure the weapons go down first. I mean, if he's got like a missile or something, you just got to play it safe. No, nah, no missiles. A bomb and a scatter laser. Oh man, scatter lasers! Ish. That's no. the green I mean, one. I know, yeah, I know they don't do system damage. But it's just oh, kind no, of no, no, no. The green ones do. The green ones do. They're kind of like a weak version of the heavy laser. Like they do two hull damage, but only one system damage. Yeah. No, oh, three hull left. So, breach and fire is kind of an odd combination. Um, I suppose it will work. The uh, as I saw it, the breach bomb is mainly just to get your Lanius's foot in the door more easily, as well as to do a bit of system damage. Basically, its job is to take down shields as well, so that the fire beam can actually mm. you know, do its job. It's not uh, the most powerful weapon, though. No. It's only it only does one system, which is kind of annoying. But you know, what can <laughs> we do? Problem is, the bridge bomb only does one hull damage, uh, one system damage, and a lot of ships early on have a buffer and shields already. It means you could be using two of them. Yeah. Mm. All right, there they go, along with one of my Lanius. Cool. No hull damage taken whatsoever. Again, with the lower hull, makes sense on smaller ships. Yeah, but it also makes them a lot harder in the long run. Yeah, you know, oh. like, I mean, you know, depending on how you play your strategies, what weapons you have, and if you have all the systems, it may it's it might be remarkably easier to survive than you think. But if you don't have them, then it's a real struggle. Well, the fact that I'm playing this on cap position isn't going to help. <laughs> so much things to destroy you with. Hey, look, it's our friendly Mantis again. Sure, you can come along. We don't have air or anything, but you're welcome. Mm. I hope you don't mind if your brain explodes. <laughs> well, if you... Well... Decompressurization will, is more likely to get your blood to boil first, so... You know, there's that. Really? Yeah. Your blood's gonna start boiling and you die from that, not really from your head exploding. But wouldn't that convert it into a gas which causes your body to implode? Eventually, yes. But you would be dead before that ever happens. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's true. Alright, breach the shields. They're down. 
And then I can use the fire beam to set fire to all of your other crud. Like weapons and such. Don't go in there. Okay. And we do have a fire thanks to the... No, we do not have a fire. And I can tell that because of the... Uh, what's it called again? Augment? Life form scanner. Yeah, yeah life form scanner. I was thinking of giving it sensors originally, but uh, either you told talked to me out of it, or I thought, you know what, you know, forget it. Let's just put airlocks on this thing so that it can actually defend itself from fires and oh, all yeah. that. It's I mean, getting the airlocks done would be useful once you get auction, and seeing that they are in the important rooms, meaning you can vent shields and weapons immediately, could be a big help. Oh yes. Uh, bounty could be vital. Why the hell would you want to give me a drone schematic? I can't use them. Yeah, you can always just sell it. I mean, at the very least, you can still sell the stuff. Yeah, the problem was I needed to give up a crew member for it. If he would have taken the mantis, I would say, sure, you can have him, but, you know, probably not. Alright, so I'm thinking you can't hurt me with your weapons, unless that's a dual shot. It's not. Cool. Um, well, I guess we're just going to do the Lanyard strategy of just sucking the air out of stuff and then killing crew eventually. Um, yes, so. Um, I think what's going to happen most is getting rid of the breach bomb for an ion weapon of sorts, so the fire beam can actually be used without needing missiles first. Or you can use Lanyard to take down shields, I guess. Yeah, it's the beginning pair is a bit gimmicky, underpowered, you know, representing the fact that it is a beginning <laughs> ship, but... What? What? I got another Mantis. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> you guys. Okay, I did get enough scrap in, so I'm going to check the store and see if I can get oxygen in. Can I get oxygen? Yes, I can, right? Oh, okay. life support. Yeah, okay, I'm getting it. What's fortunate also is that once you buy the system, it instantly fills the ship with oxygen. Yeah, that's it one of those quirks of the game. It's just handy in case one of your crew happens to be very close to death. Yeah, that's true. I think I'm going to go with a Mantis boarding party now, though. Uh, that's fine. Does mean... Well, I mean, I can still check. I mean, if it's a small crew, I send in the Mantis. If it's going to drag out, I'm probably going to send in the, Man uh, the Lanius. Okay, let's you know, see. I think it mainly just depends on like what you find. Like if you were to find a breach bomb too, now things would just some um, things would just immediately be in the favor of the Lanius because breach bomb twos and Lanius to even just two is just absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Oh, great! It's a Zoltan ship that wants a crew member. Hmm. Wait, is this is it a slaver ship or is it something else? Yep, pirate ship. Hand over one of your crew members, and the rest of you can go free unharmed. Oh god! I, you know, I just remembered something. I, and this isn't in Captain's Edition either. This was actually just in a regular game. You know, it gives you two options: draw sticks or cards or play yeah. poker for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Who's go? And basically. They switched those up, and I clicked without looking at them because I immediately assumed it was the second option that doesn't like surrender away your crew. And what happened is my lone crew member got surrendered, and I lost the game. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same happen with giant spiders playing with NGB. Like, ha, ah, first jump, eight spiders, do it. Up, oh, game over. <laughs> I think I got ten <laughs> score or something. Uh, does the fire beam take down a Zoltan shield? Yeah, it does, but it does very little damage. I think well, if I'm it guessing crosses two. in two rooms, it does one damage. Ew. All right, I'm yeah. going to give up a crew member, and it's a Lanius. Of course it would. <clears throat> you briefly consider cloning a replacement, but decide to respect the Federation laws regarding simultaneous duplicates. That yeah. can be changed. Laws? What laws? I mean, we don't care about a Lanius ship. Uh, well, it's probably for the best, right? Anyway. Oh well, at least you have oxygen and Mantis crew to use as a boarding crew. And then I then, then I have to fight an auto ship. <laughs> you still you still have two Lanius at least. I mean, even one Lanius would still give you that edge. Yeah, I got two. 
Alright, get in there. At least he didn't hack my teleporter. What did he hack? Did he go for oxygen? Engines. It's always interesting when the enemy hacks useless systems. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess it depends on the situation. Sometimes it, it is kind of funny when they go straight for, say, sensors, because that's probably the most useless system they could ever hack. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, probably. I mean, AI is pretty predictable anyway. All right, send you both to separate rooms to speed this up a bit. Mm. I wonder what happens if you hack sensors. I know it can be done without mods, but I'm still wondering what happens. Probably uh, that's nothing. That's the thing. According to a guide, hacking uh, the AI does not work with common sense. No. Sensors to them are really just there for show. They're that's mm, the enemy. I mean, enemy really ships have no sensors. Well, the flagship does. No, nope, nope. And... sensors were removed on that one. Really? Yeah, oh. sensors are gone. I guess I must have. I guess I must have forgotten. I must have overlooked that. They were in there pre-AE, but they got removed. Probably because they were... Probably just because... Uh, I guess there was no point. I mean, the AI are the telepaths. Mm. That's the thing I've noticed. Um, AI can mind control your crew when you're cloaked. Oh, yes. <sighs> yeah. It, it was like, you're not able silly. to do that. What was also an interesting observation as well, if the enemy has a cloaking device and they hack your teleporter, they sometimes time that poorly and they'll start hacking the teleporter while they're cloaked, so your guys won't <laughs> immediately get recalled. No? It is a, it's a handy thing to keep in mind if you're remembering the timings of, what, of when they use their hacking in their cloak, but it's, it's not a very precise thing. It could give you that one edge to take out a system bar if you need it or whatnot. Yeah. It's, there's odd things going on here. I mean, Capposition discovered quite a few of those. I was really impressed by them. Like, um, the light lasers that just go straight through Zoltan shield. That's a quirk. That wasn't supposed to happen, I think. Nothing can get through a Zoltan shield. Well... Uh... If, if a weapon does no hull damage or system damage, it goes straight through the Zoltan shield. Uh... I'm trying to think, like, is there any, was there any, um, default weapons in the original game that had that kind of effect? Nope. I mean, the bio beam did, but... We don't talk about the bio beam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who keeps that one around? Come yeah. on, one more all damage. We can do this. Hmm. For anyone viewing, I'm not totally knocking the bio beam. I mean, it's pretty, it's viable in certain situations. Just yeah. maybe I haven't discovered the G spot for it or whatnot. I don't know. I've never taken the bio beam with me late game. Probably not. It takes two power. It takes like 20 seconds to charge. Yeah, I mean, it takes away from other systems, and it's entirely dependent on the enemies being nightly, nightly, nicely, neatly rolled up, just for mm. one knockout punch. And that never is the case, unless they're attacking your guys. Yeah. I mean, a lot can be done with a good hack as well. Combined with borders or system damage, of course. Last door is on the hack on the hacking module. It's probably the be one of the best perks. Like about that. Which, mm, yeah. I bet some people will ask me, like, why did I not bother putting hacking on a uh, on, on any of these Lanius bombers? Like, it's, it's a boring ship. Like, why wouldn't you do that? That's just insanity. And I'm thinking, I was thinking of doing that originally. Uh, in the initial draft of the ship, the uh, cloaking room was replaced with a hacking room. 
Yeah, but I yeah. guess not only does it break away from tradition, but you know, because you know, I was trying to keep it as closely based on the uh, an original enemy Laney's farm. But I also thought, you know, it, it would lead to more exotic tactics with that mm -hmm. unusual cloaking mind control combo. Yeah. Ugh, another AI ship. Wonderful. And I send over my mantises instead of my Lanius. Oh. <laughs> Well, the AI. What's the AI ship? Is it the auto ships or the ones with the AI avatars? Uh, auto hacker. One of the gray ones. Well, they're both gray. The dark gray ones. The, the ones that look like constructors. Yeah, the one with no crew in it whatsoever. Ooh. What's it? What level is your teleporter? One. But I got a clone bay up, so... Yeah, I, I, did, yeah, I did forget about that. Actually, I did lead to the question, which do you prefer? And I will extend this to the audience as well, if they feel like, you know, commenting. Do you prefer the med bay or the cloning bay? Mm. I kind of keep them on equal footing, but if... Like, if I get a clone bay, I'll probably never buy a med bay. Or, and vice versa. But stay on a ship like Slug B, I'll probably look more to a clone bay because it has more blue options to it. Can be used in events and whatnot. Med bay has a decent amount of blue options as well, but they only start from level two or level three. Mm, I, don't, I don't know. I, med bay is usually a more reliable option, all things considered. Clone bay, I want, it, it only really becomes strong once it's upgraded and in has the backup DNA, which means it's higher maintenance. Usually, I usually don't upgrade my clone bay anyway. I mean, the only problem is with boarding strategy in the clone bay, you're more likely to not send over a boarding party at full force. I mean, they're gonna have lost some health from the previous battle. Yeah. But again, you don't have to pull them back when health starts getting low. I mean, yeah. if the enemy ends up using a cloak or something and you can't get your crew back, they're dead. Dead for good. Well, yeah, if they have blast doors. Yeah. I know, like, I'll never replace it, but if I have to make a pick, I'd go for Clone Bay. Yeah, Clone Bay is... I think I've just grown a preference for Clone Bay because I had really good experiences with the Mantis C, with that quirky Lanius Mantis uh, pairing that it had. Mm -hmm. Well, that you don't have to look after it. I mean, Clone Bay will hit your crew no matter what you do. If not, with a Med Bay, you have to send your crew in every so often and something that can easily be forgotten as well well you have to remember also that it has use on the ship like if there's borders and fires and there's just no way you can control it you can just vent the whole place and immediately send everyone to the med bay to help mm. to, kill. to some extent they you can end. yeah true okay i'll give you that one <laughs> then again i've recently done a run with one of my custom ships um I ended up being destroyed by a boarding party. It was um, incredible. I had like six to seven mantas on board, and I got constantly bombed with bombs and stuff like that. In the end, I had everyone covering a med bay while I was just looking at my shields getting destroyed for the weapons to finish me off. That wasn't a good one. Ugh. Seven mantas, though. That's that. You, I really can't think of any scenario where that you would be able to survive that easily, unless you were somehow able to control the enemy ship soon, because that it will just just tear everything apart. Mm, yeah. But actually, I just remembered. Or, oh yeah, when I was playing the fish hook, which is uh, another custom ship. Uh, did you ever review that one, the fish hook? Uh, no, I've seen it, but I was busy doing other stuff. I might still do that one. Yeah, basically, the fish hook's perk is that it has a it has two, it usually can come in with like two artillery, which basically combine into one, and it has like a huge cutting beam that does huge damage and causes guaranteed hull breaches. But it's not what I'm talking about. Basically, what happened is I only had two crew for most of my beginning part of that run, and it was going smoothly enough. I mean, I had decent defenses. My cutting beam was upgraded a fair bit, but I got boarded. And what happened is that uh, they went into the cloning bay. I tried venting the place, mm -hmm. but I made the mistake of letting my Lanius get killed. Mm. And basically, they destroyed the cloning bay, even though I had vented the entire ship. 
the repair drone, I think the repair, the drone system got destroyed, or the repair drone got destroyed by the enemy borders, and they basically, just before Mylenius came back to life, they destroyed the clone, but they gave over. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've been paying attention to a lot of things, and I know it's all player bias, but I've heard Sleep say, well, the enemy has stronger weapons um, for the light lasers, you know, the anti-personnel lasers, because they can't target crew effectively. I had it happen that one guy got hit three times in a row. I was like, yeah, I think they really want that one dead. Oh, yeah. Problem was, he was a rockman, so he was huddling over to the med bay. He got shot again and actually died. It was like, Ugh, come on. See, and, uh, just can hold grudges. Yeah. Well, this is like the fifth AI ship I'm fighting again. Also got a third mantis in. I think the game is really trying to tell you something. Is like, here, have all these nice mantis borders, but we're going to put you up against ships that they can't do well against anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the fire beam's useless as well, and the breach bomb I don't really need. Oh, man, it's just tough luck so much. Yeah, not the best showcase we could have done for this one. Oh, well. Maybe you'll get one. Maybe you'll get its one day in the sunlight soon enough. <laughs> yeah, probably. And then I'm gonna get killed. Uh, I've had luck with it, with l luck with uh, my playthroughs. Tr playing it is tricky, definitely much more tricky than straightforward. Just send everybody party affairs, boarding parties. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. It it has uh, its obvious it's obvious weaknesses, and some people just look in and go like, "Oh, this is going out." Or if they get raw people, they're like, "Okay, you two, get your asses back in the weapons and engineering. These guys are taking over." Hmm. And that's that. Yeah. Oh well. It happens. Anyway. I mean, I kind of like them early on, what you're doing here with these ships. They're really, they play differently, and finding one of those lately is getting kind of hard. Usually they just put on some weapons and, there you go, look at this special thing. And they're like, yeah, well, it's just a gun strategy, so. Alright. It's not mm, a yep. uh, ship taken care of. Both my Lannis are great at combat. They've been whacking at systems for years now. <laughs> Haven't killed a single person yet, but hey, we're good at it. Clearly, taking apart machinery that can't defend itself is, the, is just the same amount of experience as tearing someone apart in real life. Clearly. I mean, maybe NGs, but... Hey, guess what? Another AI ship. Of course. With a missile Girl, are launcher. Are you in the rebel sector? I'm living the strangest um, thing around the sector. I think it's a pirate sector. A lot of auto ships in a pirate sector. That's crazy. That I mean, I could, I could be in a pirate... Um, the problem on Captain's position is it doesn't say pirate sector, NG sector, just some weird name. You get to learn some of the names along the, the days you play, but you know. Mm, you probably entered the Rebel Sector. Rebel Sectors just really love their auto ships. Maybe not as much as auto sectors, but you know, you will, half the ships you find are auto ships. Half the ships? They're all auto ships. <laughs> look, oh, look, it's a Federation ship. Nope, wait, that's a civilian. Okay. Well, two Laniuses in two separate rooms speed things up a little bit. The whole concept of the auto ships themselves is pretty great to play with. No crew to look out for and stuff like that. It really helps. But the giant amount of weird things that happen when you play with the ice ships is what really makes them fun. I mean, sensors are always manned, which means in Nebulas, you can still see the interior of your own ship. Um, on the flagship, you can see the weapon charges on the flagship's weapons, which is also mm. not possible. You can't buy crew, but you can get them from events. Um, you cannot dismiss your final crew member, which makes sense if you look at the normal game. I mean, if you dismiss your last crew member there, it's game over, but 
you don't need him there, but you still can get rid of him. Um, what else is there? Well, there's the whole UI thing. Um, yeah. Doesn't the game crash, though, if you lose, you know, lose quote for quote, someone? Yeah. Like yeah. You're fine if you win the role, though. So if, if you say, like, okay, send them into the giant spiders, you win, you get the roar. If you lose, the game crashes. Yeah. You can try again, then, so. I was trying to think of how that would go down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he wants. Auto shit showing up. And basically, they're like, can you help us? And they're like, no, no. response. We just like, <laughs> we'll send in nobody. And somehow that takes care of the problem. Yeah, we'll send in nobody. Then nobody dies, and the game crashes. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That should be fun, calling your crew nobody. Just a random crew member is named nobody. No, <laughs> nobody is now an enemy. Great! Somebody. Uh, Alright, we're almost done taking care of the next auto ship. Anyway, um, there are some other things like um, those buttons to send crew to their station, stuff like that, are in a weird place. Um, another weird thing is if you don't have oxygen, there's this event in cabin position where they just ignore the fact that you don't have oxygen. Like, um, with a ship that has run out of air or something. Pump the ship full of oxygen. Sure, we don't have oxygen <laughs> ourselves, but... Uh, yeah, that is pretty amazing. It could easily be done, but Oxygen on a ship is just that common that it's probably just not worth the blue option. I'm in a sector called Tau 3, so I don't know if that's... Tau 3, is it green or red? Red. Uh, a group of mysterious alien vessels. Hmm. I guess we'll find out if you encounter a line of auto ships or actual pirate ships for once. Yeah, that'll be the day. Alright, so I can get... Oh, the heavy iron takes two? Hmm. So does that one. Nah. Um, well, I guess we're just going to move up. We don't need anything else. Cool. Alright, let's see what we get this time. Um, beacon seems... Okay, nothing here. Ah, there's another store. Check that one in a bit. A ship refueling station. I think I'm in a... No, I can't be in a civilian sector. I think I'm in a pirate sector. Well, actually, what is what music is playing? Like, is it like a very... Uh, uh, it doesn't ambient? sound threatening. It doesn't sound threatening. Then probably not pirate. What usually happens, if you enter a rebel pirate sector, the uh, colonial music will start playing. Hmm. Yeah, it may take a bit. May take some research if you don't remember it exactly, but basically, it's very ominous. Not scary horror ominous, but like it makes you. It's kind of like if you were in enemy territory, basically. That's all. Nah, I think it's a pirate sector actually. So I'm uh, finally finding a ship that I can probably take down, which means that it doesn't have. Well, it's not an AI ship. They have a teleport themselves. I mean, teleporting into a ship with three mantis is probably not a good way to prevent death, but who am I to complain? Alright, so now I have to get all my weapons online. Luckily, the breach what bomb kind of, fires pretty quickly. What kind of defenses do you have? Offense? Just level two shields at the moment. Alright, let's hope you don't have a buffer in shields, and you do. But you do have a breach in there, so we're gonna fire it another one. And then it'll set you on fire. Haha! -ha. Finally! So it already lost half its crew to my mantises. <laughs> we might as well just make a point. <laughs> it's not enough that we just like kill all your friends and family. No, no, we have to set your ship on fire! Yes! And it is on fire. Problem is, it's got a level three med bay though, so I have to distract the crew. I don't know if you can grab them away from the weapons, uh, from what they're. I don't know if you can distract crew from firefighting. Yep, you can. 
Did you set the shields on fire? Uh, no, the shields are breached. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Actually, now that I, I just now realized... The thing is, if the shields are on fire, they will always go to deal with that above anything else. And then I just realized, oh crap, if it's breached, there will be no oxygen, and they won't go into a deoxygenated room with breaches. <laughs> they just won't. Well, the good thing is, if shields are breached, just send your Lanius into the shield room. Alright, so the entire yeah, thing's on fire now. Brilliant. I always find it weird when crew just gives up on rooms. It used to be pretty darn clear on AE, I don't know if, um, on pre-AE, like, if a medbay had four tiles and all four tiles was on fire, they wouldn't go in no matter what. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> mm, no, but consider the flagship. If you set their medbay on fire, all their crew could be at full health, they would never, ever repair the medbay again. Because of their level 3 auction, the fires wouldn't go out, and that's it. Uh, yeah, that's right. They actually that is an interesting point. I didn't really consider that. If, an up if they have an upgraded oxygen, then the fires can't be oxygen. But then again, mm, that's level, not level, the case for most ships. Level three oxygen is indeed not very common. Oh, it's mostly just a beginning strategy. I'm sure someone will find some unique uh, way to take the ship and do what do their thing, sure. like whatever any other ship. I mean, not doing too bad either. I mean, I haven't repaired a single time, and I'm now still on... Uh, how can you... S oh, you have to be at a store for that, probably. I find that rather ironic that the, the asphyxia is lasting longer than the dymos. I mean, I thought dymos would be pretty overpowered. No. <laughs> well, I mean, I haven't encountered a single ship carrying missiles yet, so... Well, uh, I just I got destroyed so. by missiles on the on that one. Right, yeah. burst. <laughs> okay. Time to get this thing going, huh? Um got an ion weapon by the way. Perfect. What kind of ion weapon? Is it like uh, the ion burst mark two? Yeah, the ion burst one, two shots, each doing one ion damage. It'll work great with a fire beam. Unless I encounter a ship with two shields, which probably isn't going to take too much longer. <laughs> Explore the asteroid fields. No, I learned my lesson. No. Yeah, going over everything so far, I think the biggest uh. threat to pretty much any of the Lanish bombers is that environmental sectors are a bit more dangerous than usual. Mostly because you can't immediately take care of weapon systems that will take your shields away. And uh, Zoltan ships, you know, waste your initiative, mm -hmm. were, or just outright impossible to take on, like in the case of Dymos. Yeah, you can't do anything. I mean, you could give him a Zoltan shield bypass, but at some point you got to say, well, too powerful is too powerful, you know? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's reasonable enough to live the dream, but if you just make it too easy, then what's the point? Mm-hmm. I think this will be my last auto ship for quite a while now. I'm hoping. <laughs> I, uh, the, uh, the, the, you say that now, but then as soon as you get to the exit, you get two options. Auto sector or auto sector. <laughs> Rebel sector or AI cluster. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I can use my fire beam. to no good. I can level up the mantis using it. Alright. One I Lannis. Can... Well, <coughs> go ahead, sorry. I got one Lannis in piloting, one Lannis in weapons. Hoping to take down the hull a bit quicker that way. I had a third one, but he got sent away. Let's hope, he's, let's hope they're having a fun time with him sucking the oxygen out of their soup. The dude actually did <coughs> hack my oxygen. So I'm going to blow it up. Preferably. Well, wait. Um, actually, usually the hacking is not going to be strong enough to deplete your oxygen entirely, unless it's like level 3 hack. Uh, I don't know, actually. I should check it out. It's at 25 now. 
Wait, wait, so, did you ever deactivate oxygen at any point? Uh, the previous fight I did. I'm gonna see if it drops below. I mean, I got a clone, but if my crew dies, so what, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it looks good, actually. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, now that we're fighting auto ships, I mean, they're also kind of an interesting idea, but... If you want to build a decent auto ship, you'll always end up with a few things being exactly the same. I mean, you need a repair drone, which means you need drone control. And you need slug gel, otherwise if drone control gets breached and destroyed, it's gone. For good. Mm, that's true. But, you pretty much can get every support system in the game. I mean, yeah, if you look at the anomaly, you could have had cloaking, the f uh, drones, artillery, hacking, mind control. The sheer combination of that was incredible. Just good luck being able to power all that stuff at the same time. Mm, yeah, well, you have a backup battery. <laughs> but, uh, for a total of 29 possible power. But then again, it depends. I mean, for drones, I think realistically you would only be using 4 power in that system total. I mean, I don't mm. really think anybody seriously uses 8 power in drones unless they're like, I like my combat drones, Hark 2s. I mean, if you get a drone recovery arm, um, sure. Well, that doesn't happen all that often either. I mean, especially not in cam edition with the addition of so many more combat augments. Hmm. Then again, I don't know, combat augments, thinking about that now. They sometimes just don't work, which kind of annoys me. Like, I, like especially for ships that depend on them early in their mm, run. Like, yeah. Uh, Slug B had something like that, that at least yes, like to disable yes. weapons. Sometimes it just wouldn't work. Or if it did work, it would disable the weapons that weren't the biggest threat. Oh, yeah. he's got a Artemis missile? We'll take out his little basic laser instead. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I mean, if you know how those augments work, it kind of makes sense, but... Well... I mean, it's just a constant two-ion damage on weapons that they get. Whoa, Mobile yeah. Shipyard Eagle or Luminal 4 Medical Emergency. Someone, yeah, quarantine or auto sector. I mean, come on, give me a break. <laughs> Ugh, we'll stay away from the stress beacons in the. Means I don't have to use much fuel here. Because I'm running low on that as well. Yeah, it would give you a bit of advantage in case you did run out. Unless, of course, zombies came to visit you. <laughs> hmm. Uh, tag the rebels. I think one of the most amusing events in the zombie sectors is basically like you go, you say, I um, I, I wasn't really in distress. I was just, you know, I just wanted to leave here. So I let him on the ship, and he's like, oh, oh, thank God. Okay, I don't, I, I kind of, I just need to sit down for a minute. He immediately grabs the nearest crew member and barfs into his face. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, that's exactly how it's described yeah. in terms of zombie. I get it. Oh. oh snap! He got killed. Oh, what happened? Um, I, I dropped in a breach bomb under a clone bay, and a dude with low health was just walking in. Boom! <laughs> he did. That's all. I, I love doing that. It's just amusing when they just, It's like they don't see it coming. Hmm. It's why the bio bombs actually work in this game. Hey, look, an explosive device that's going to kill me. Let's just not do anything. <laughs> it's nothing suspicious. It's just a flush wound. <sighs> yeah. Uh, take the supplies meant originally for civilians. That has never worked out for me, ever. Okay. Yeah. There was also that one event where basically the military guy is like, here, uh, we could lock these guys up and just leave it at that, but I think it'd be funnier if we transported them over to your ship <laughs> and you deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of drone recovery, I mean, there it is. Don't need it, but there it is. Adaptive beam. Hey, that's the one that sort of turns into a glaive beam at the end. You know, actually, thinking about it now, if I do ever make an update to, for the CE to, uh, for CE edition, I probably, well, 
Captain's Edition. You know, Captain's Edition edition wouldn't make sense. But what do you say? That's distracting. Uh, I probably should get rid of certain augments that are absolutely useless to the player for these ships, as drone recovery is just taking up a slot and it does nothing for you. Mm, I really wouldn't bother with that. I mean, there's tons of other. Oh, I should have bought fuel. Damn it! I always do that. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, I know how to. All right, so I'm looking at the timer. I'm probably gonna end it soon. So let's have some fun with this sector, huh? The stress signal comes from a small station, only manned by a skeleton crew. One of their team contacts your ship on a pirate channel. Uh, sorry, I'm not really in distress, but I hope to sign up on a ship to get out of this forsaken sector. Welcome aboard. The new crew member gets on board your ship, suddenly looking quite pale. I'm okay, sir. I promise. Just. Let's get out of here. The crewman does not seem okay at all. You order a full medical check, but the individual turns violent on the way to the med bay. This person is infected. I didn't actually lose crew on that one. <laughs> so what happened to them? Did they just like no, just I, walk in there? Yeah, it just became an enemy. Alright, let's do as many distress beacons as we can. I wonder if upgrading Cologne Bay would do anything with that. Let's try it. Yeah. It's an it's experiment. Oh, right, fuel crud. A f disabled Federation craft, this is a big hello. Did you read me? We've been ambushed by the rebels. Life support is failing, but I come aboard. Welcome aboard. When you your crew member comes aboard, everything seems fine, but then the person collapses at his newly designated station and you order them to put under medical supervision. Suddenly turns violent, escapes into the corridors of the ship. Intruder on board. I'm getting the best of luck on these. Uh, at least you didn't lose anybody. No. Yeah. Yet. Now I'm out of fuel and the rebels are closing in though. A rebel ship hails you, those citizens responding to your distress call, blah blah blah. It's an enemy. Ooh, I might actually be able to use the fire beam once. Uh, mm, yes, I will. Okay. Uh, it's time for a moment. Actually, you know what I just remembered? You know the Mantis camp event? Does the fire beam work there? What, the Mantis Camp can. Yeah, you know, the Mantis War Camp. Yeah. The... Uh, oh. no. F I what? think it actually requires a firebomb. Oh, that's that. That's no. Uh, that's an oversight right there. I mean, it's a fire beam. It's, I mean, you just, like, sh slash across their entire camp with that thing. There's no way they're putting that out. Oh, well, no. anyway, that's, that's something else. Anyway, so basically, this is the moment of truth the fire beam gets its moment to shine. Let's see what well, happens. it has one event where you can use a fire beam on. And there it goes the, that? Um, pirate vessel where you can set fire to a cologne col uh, set fire to crops or something. Hmm. Huh. So here's a bit of a problem. I got my Lannis here, which is low on health, and if he wants to get into the rest of the ship, he needs to go t through a burning clone bay. Yeah, wait, your, your clone bay's on fire? I'm destroyed. Oh. oh. <laughs> I don't really made it out. <laughs> so these dudes probably think they're safe now. Wrong. Here comes fire. Fire on a Lannis ship of all places? <laughs> Yeah. I uh, returned the favor. So I got now Lannis crew who are close to death and three mantises to take care of fire. Hmm. You didn't get doors? Uh, no. Oh man, this is gonna be that toppy. Well, they're in just as a worse of a position as I am, so. And the Clomay fire just died out. Thanks to lack of air. Well, close one. Yeah. Go, Mantises, repair that clone bay. Just, like, just imagine them trying to take up a wrench. And just every time, like they, they, they do that little, they, they put their little uh, claws on, on each side of the wrench that is slowly lifting it up, and then they one <laughs> claw juts up and then it just falls out. <laughs> it, be it beats the way Rockmen are doing it, just bang a rock on it. Don't worry, people, we're not just banging rocks together here. Well, it kind of looks like that, though. <laughs> Oh, it looks. <clears throat> they could just be punching it. 
Here, this is the sensitive equipment needs to be placed carefully in order for the system to work. No, let's just beat it! <laughs> God damn it, why won't you work? Oh look, it fixed it. Play my theme song. Uh <laughs> no, I, shit, I'm ringing the wrong theme. No, actually you know what? Forget it. Alright, so ships on fire, it. auction is destroyed. Yeah, that's a bad day for your rebel drone carrier. Alright, we've got a few jumps left in this beacon. I actually got some fuel out of that as well. I recently learned that there are actually two fail safes for uh, preventing stalemates. I had um, no I idea. Recall. One of them is that uh, if, you, if the enemy ship can't escape, but you know it's one of those events where you have to get fuel, yeah. eventually they'll just go like, you know what, I give up. Here, have some fuel. Yeah, and the other one is when you're out of fuel, ships will always immediately run away. Which can be a problem, because in captain position there are ships that don't have piloting and engines. I think the second failsafe kicks in when ships don't do a lot of damage to each other for a while. Yeah. It can happen even in a, like that the uh, Rock Cruiser event, which it actually happened to someone on the Steam forum. Yeah, yeah, I read that. Hmm. Alright, so that's another one of those taken care of. Actually starting to get a good amount of scrap in. I could actually make it, perhaps, with just an ion burst and a fire beam as weapons. Still got the bridge bomb, is the though. Is the, Rebel Fleet, is the Rebel Fleet gonna box you in? Uh, nah, I got fuel now. I'm using the, um, what's it called? It extends the number of lines you can see for where the Rebel crew is going to end up. Rebel fleet, like a pursuit extender, that's it. Yeah, I, I use that mod too. About one thing to keep in mind, did you go through any nebulas? Yeah, they don't work very well. It really messes you up when you're in a nebula sector. Because it still slows them down a little bit, but not too much. And like, okay, I can't do it. Oh, wait, yes, I could. <laughs> All right. Oh, well. Stuff happens. Mm, let's see what else we can come up with here. Mm, a lot of NG ships, then again, makes sense. Entries, mm. hmm. yum, yum. This is going to be a tricky one to do, I think. The weapons can't hurt me, but he has a med bay. And two shields, so I can't do anything against that. I guess I'm going to send in some mantis as well. Uh, I would probably recommend destroying the oxygen with the mantis and then sending in the lanius crew after them. Well, Can I send in. Your ship? <coughs> uh, they can't. I sent in oh. the lanius and oxygen, they're now hitting that. So I'm going to send in the mantis to shields to distract them so the lanius can take care of oxygen. Which just happened. Cool. It's a bit of a annoyance that all the NG ships on Cap Position have the um, nanobot repairs. The uh, NG minibot dispensal dispersal. Yeah. It's uh, it's fairly annoying, but this is NG we're talking about. What it really is annoying though is if it's an NG place that's been taken over by the Mantis, then you're in <laughs> trouble. If well, with a fire beam, it shouldn't be that hard. That's assuming you can get through the shields, unlike my luck. But then again, I had four lanius at that point. So. Right, med base it, down, it, and the mantis can take care of the rest of the crew. Perfect. Yes. A bit worse for wear, but they're fine. Still a bit singed from the fire, but whatever. Oh, crud. Dead end. Mm. Oh. <laughs> That's gonna be a. <laughs> That's going to be a great video. <laughs> I mean, I'm at the bottom, and I have to go entirely around the exit beacon if I want to reach it. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> that works. I, 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 I've been in that kind of situation in the Vulcan sector. I assumed, naturally, that the exit would connect to like these beacons at the top of the map. No, no, of course not. I'd have to go through the Rebel Fleet five times just to... Spin around and get yeah. to the exit. You're not going to be doing that on Captain's Edition anymore. Either they have ASB or PDS. 
Encountering the rebels' fleet. Hey, you just shot my... Oh my, you bastards. They just shot down one of my mantises. Have some fire. So what's more important? Taking care of the fire and shields or taking care of my land is borders in your med bay? Taking care of the fire and shields. Idiots. Well, at the end of the line, we still got a use for the fire beam. Well, at the very least, I imagine uh, it, your path took um, an interesting divergence, I should say, for this kind of ship. I imagine if you had Rockman borders, though, you would have a much smoother time. Although, you know, I, I guess because of the freedom, obviously, I'm going to have fondness for Galenius and you know having some use for the strategy I came up with, but. I can't ignore what's plausible and reliable. Ooh. I might actually make it out. I just got a fleet delay event. Oh my goodness. That is just so sublime. The system seems to be completely evacuated. Standard medical checkups that your crew has to undergo at each beacon reveal are fine. One of your crew members shows signs of the infection. You have no idea how this could have happened. Lorian is now an enemy. And naturally, it had to be one of my Lanius. Wow. <laughs> I swear, the game is just like, oh, you have a ladies' ship, and this strategy involves using them? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're the ones who are going to die. So, so much for our Lanius boarding strategy. I only got one left. No kidding. Not to mention, this is like a total reversal compared to the Dynalos or the Mantis or the ones dying all the time. And I wouldn't make it out in time either way. Well, I'm going to go until I catch up to the fleet, and then I'm going to cut it quits. Go ahead. Um, Mantis War Camp. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Uh, you can always just say, yeah, I'll do it. Oh, Maybe look, I've got something. another crew member. This one's a human. Yay. Yay. At least he can repair fires better. Yeah. At least. Alright, time to hit the rebel fleet up, see what happens. PDS. Oh, well. It, what? Whoa. A, a rebel admiral cuts in and establishes a video feed. Disregard this order. Hold back. We will deal with this person. He turns to you. This is the last, least thing I expected. You, after all, should know what we are building here, right? Let's put it to the test, then. Did the admiral ship emerge from the mobile hangar, though it's unfinished? It matches the specs of the rebel flagship. <laughs> I You're painted the, <laughs> the rebel flagship. Nah, the uh, unconstructed version. The one you get to unlock the Federation cruiser. And there's PDS in the background. <laughs> yes. And I can get through his shields, and it's got a medbay. <laughs> <laughs> if that's not a giant middle finger, <laughs> then I don't know anymore. Oh, it's time. It's the the moment of truth. Whether this will end on a happy note or <laughs> a dismal one, we'll see shortly. Well, the good thing is he sent over two people. Now he only has two left. At least the construction is easier, far, far easier, even when we consider that the Rebel flagship ends up in the same position. It just At least it doesn't have mind control. Uh, we'd be screwed then. Mm. <clears throat> well, we're starting to hit uh, their weapons a bit. If I can now send my other two persons that are left into the shields, we might be able to bring up a decent enough distraction. So wait, at the moment you have one Lanius, three Mantis, and one Human, right? Yeah. Alright. Alright, their missile launcher's down. Oh, that's perfect. And it doesn't look like they have level three medbay either. Probably not. They, it's The levels for everything, including the shield, are lower than usual. Although I do know it usually has a minimum of three shields at all times. Mm, this one only had two. But it's, really? well... Well, we're only in Sector 2, so, you know. You're only... Wait, what? You're only in Sector 2? Two? <laughs> 2 or 3, yeah. I think... I don't know, actually, I think you're in 3. Because remember, you went through Sector 1, and you ended up in a Rebel Sector. You fought nothing but auto ships. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sector. Uh, level 1 Medbay, indeed. Alright, so I've lost one of my Mantises now, but it's for the good cause, I guess. 
Clone Bay is offline. Teleporter is on a long ass cooldown. Well, we'll keep them occupied in there, I guess. I might actually make it out of this. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. And the PDS is not firing, probably because it got overwritten. Huh. Yeah, made it out. The rest of the squadron is already closing in. There's no time to salvage the complete flagship. You order your crew to set its reactor to overload. Is this it? Have you won? You somehow doubt it. Your mission was to deliver information to your side to follow your current orders. But surely you have bought yourself some time here. Everybody get ready to jump. Plus one fuel and fully delayed by four jumps. Did you get like a lot of resources or the main benefit just being the, del uh, the jump delays? I got one fuel and four oh. fleet delay. I mean, the sector was already taken over by the rebels, so. Uh, I, I guess right. it's, it's. So, good. on the next beacon, I will be called by the rebels again because the exit was also already overtaken. So now I get the chance to immediately jump away and get killed on the next beacon or attempt to challenge the correct anyway and see what happens when I do that. So, let's do that. You prepare to quickly take some of the salvage aboard, but it's not long before a stray ESB shot pierces through your ship. Other hit the wreckage, and your salvage crew barely makes it off the ship before the hull integrity fails. You have to get out of here. Two fuel, two missiles, 15, and one damage to your hull, which takes away my last point. And that's it? Yeah. Hey, at least I can use the flagship that I just created. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, they're closing in. We gotta get out of here. No, no. Nah. In there. <laughs> <laughs> all right well <laughs> that's gonna be it for the asphyxia so thank you guys for watching oh, hope you're still enjoying the series feel free to support by commenting liking and or subbing federations come thank you for being here once again no problem i hope to see you guys on the next episode which will be the third ship on the line of lania's borders see you then bye everyone